Hey guys, uh, here's another episode of our algorithms in CUDA. Uh, this time we're going to be doing binary trees. Um, so let's, I got a presentation here to start us off. Oh, let's get to it. Okay. So there's going to be binary trees in CUDA. Um, so binary trees on the CPU uh, in serial code are typically implemented using dynamic memory allocation. Um, so that means that we might have something that looks like this. It'll be a, like a node struct um, or a class maybe, and you have pointers to the left and right child nodes, and then you might have another class uh, maybe called tree, and then you, and you use like new or malloc to create these, uh, these nodes dynamically. We don't want to do that on the GPU. Um, so we also need to recognize that trees are often dependent on the order in which the nodes are added. So here's two examples. Um, both of these basically started with this, the same initial array of numbers. Um, so you can see the numbers are 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. But the, you get different structures depending on how those nodes were added. Um, yeah. So here's an idea for how we might construct uh, a tree in CUDA. We assign each integer in the array to a different thread running on the GPU. Um, the order in which the threads will execute, of course, is beyond our control, so we have to be okay with that. Um, and so an example would be, for example, uh, if we have the array A equals 365184, thread 0 might get 3, thread 1 gets 6, thread 2 gets 5, etc. But again, these threads will run um, basically in parallel. So thread uh, thread three here might get to a certain block of code slightly ahead of, say, thread one or vice versa. We, we have to be okay with that. So when we create um, a binary tree, there's basically two steps. So when adding a node to a tree, um, we are going to... What, step one is we traverse the partially constructed tree until we hit a leaf node. We then add the new node to the uh, tree. So an idea is here, we can, we can notice that um, step one, the traversal, can be done in parallel, while the adding uh, must be done basically uh, sort of sequ sequentially, one at a time kind of thing. So here's our plan basically. We're going to um, assign each integer in our array to a different thread each thread will independently add its integer to the binary tree. Each thread can, verse, can traverse the tree in parallel, but must only insert its value uh, one at a time. Therefore, the insertion of each integer will have to be done atomically or by using uh, locks unlocks. Sim this is similar to the idea we saw in the finding the max value in an array um, tutorial where we had the mutex. Um, this will ensure that only one thread is adding its integer at a time. Uh, so, so let's so that's the basic steps we're gonna we're gonna be doing here. But we have to remember that we don't want to use dynamic memory allocation. So we don't want to have a lot of uh, pointers and in, in new or mallocs to different structs and that kind of thing of nodes. So what is our our tree data structure gonna look like on the GPU? Okay, so given an array uh, C equals 365124, for example, the corresponding binary tree will, of course, contain six non-empty nodes. There's six numbers, so six nodes. Here's an idea. What if we only record the children of all the nodes? Because each node is itself a child node of its parent, this effectively means uh, we just store every node except the root node. And that's because the root has no parent. Uh, so if we look at this example here, it might look something like this. So here's our, our pictorially what our tree looks like. And then this is what our tree data structure is going to look like, this array. So we can see that the root children, which go in position 0 and 1, is 3 and 6, 3 and 6. Um, the children for node 1 go in position 0, 1, 2, and 3. So node 1 is right here, so its children are negative 1 and 2, negative 1, 2. The children for node 6 go in position 2 times 6 is 12, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So the children of node 6 are 
5 and negative 1, so we have 5 and negative 1. So let's run through an, an example in a little bit more detail. Um, so we have this uh, array C equals 3, 6, 5, 1, 2, 4. So the number is 1 to 6, basically in unsorted order. Initially, our tree, um, our tree array is uh, going to be all negative 1s. This basically means the tree is empty. This array has length 14 because each node has two children. And in the array C, there are six nodes. So 2 times 6 is 12. But we do need to add two more children for the root node. So 2 plus 12 is a total of 14. So here's an example of what it might look like. So pictorially, we, we start with this. It's an empty tree. And so, an empt so the array is full of negative ones. Next, we add 3. So the, so the um, children of the root node go into positions 0 and 1. So we see 0 is 3 and 1. Position 1 is negative 1. That makes sense. We add a 6. Now that becomes a 6, 3 and 6 for position 0 and 1. So the children of node 3 go into positions 2 times 3 is 6, so 6 and 7. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Negative 1 and 4, negative 1 and 4. Again, now this becomes a 1. The children of node 1 go in positions 2 times 1 is 2, so 2 and 3. 0, 1, 2, and 3 is negative 1 and 2. Children of node 6 go in positions 2 times 6 is 12, so 12 and 13. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So our 5 and negative 1, that's 5 and negative 1. So in the code I'm about to show you, here's an, ex an actual uh, trial example that I did. So this one is of the array here. This is the numbers 1 to 16 in unsorted order, and so pictorially it would look like this. Um, so the basic idea of what I'm doing here is actually I learned it from uh, looking at the, the work of this guy named Benjamin Newcomb, I think is how you say his name. Um, and he was doing code, I think, for his thesis on uh, n body problems. So that's basically simulating a whole bunch of or n objects kind of gravitationally interacting with each other. And so I, I kind of learned it from there. So you can check out his video. It's actually really cool. Yeah, so it's, yeah, you can see here, this is um, his tree code for solving the n-body problem. It's uh, kind of like simulating a galaxy or, or something like that. Okay, really cool. Um, in his case, he wasn't actually using binary trees. He was doing oct trees, so each tree has, or each node in the tree has eight children. Um, but I, I basically adapted the uh, similar idea for what we're doing here. Okay. So let's take a look at the code. Yeah, let's do this. Nope. Okay, so just like in every other um, tutorial, we have the our four files. Our main file, kernel header file, kernels.cu file holding the actual kernel code, and then our make file. Make file hasn't changed, uh, still the same as always. So let's run through the, the main file here. So in our main function, we do, in this case we're just doing a test uh, a test case of for an array of uh, size 16. So we have the host array, which I'm calling X, the device array, uh, which is right, right there, and uh, the host root and host uh, sorry the host root and device root is just holding the first entry in the array, um, and then the child host child array and, and device child array. That is the the tree data structure, basically. That is, for example, um, so, yeah, right here. No, right here. So this, for example, this array here is what I'm calling child. This is holding all the information for our binary tree. Okay. Okay, so what do we do? We allocate all our memory. And you'll notice for the child arrays, it's not 2 times n, but it's 2 times n plus 1. 
because um, remember we need those two extra entries for the uh, the root nodes uh, children. So what do I do? I fill in the host um, array with the numbers 1 to 16 in this case. Then this part of the code here is basically just sorting or unsort, not sorting, um, scram shuffling, shuffling the numbers so the numbers will not be in sorted order anymore. It's not 1, 2, 3, 4 all the way up to 16. It's, it's an unsorted array, a, sh a shuffled array. Um, we set the root variable to the first entry in our array. Um, and then here I just print out the array just so we can see what it is later. Um, we copy the root and the array to the device. We run the kernel, which I'll show in a minute. Uh, then we copy back the uh, child array to the host. Um, and that's so we can see what this tree, this binary tree data structure looks like. Um, then I print that child array. And then I free the memory. So that's the main function. Pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, the kernel had a file. Again, we only have one kernel, so we're just declaring that here. Uh, the kernel takes in the, the unsorted array. For example, in this case, it's an uh, unsorted shuffled array of the numbers 1 to 16. It takes in our child array that's going to hold basically the tree data structure, the, the information that makes up this binary tree. It takes in the root, which is all that is, is just the first entry in X, basically. The reason I kind of added that separately here instead of because the information is obviously contained in X as well, since it's the first entry. I added it separately here so that it's it's uh, accessible in global memory on the device, and just I think it makes it easier. And then and then and the size of the array. So in this case, it's 16. Uh, the make file again stays the same. So our kernel. Okay, this is what's actually going on. It's not very long. So what happens? Okay, so each um, each node, or each thread, sorry, gets assigned to an entry in our array X. We enter the while loop, and what this block of code here does is it says, okay, we're at a new body, because a uh, new body is always initially true. We enter in, we're at a new body, we go into here, and we figure out, okay, is this, whatever, th whatever number is assigned to this thread, is it greater than the root value or is it less? So are we going to are we going to be branching to the left or are we going to be branching to the right? And that's what this child path means. So it's the child path is either zero or one, depending on which way we we branch. Once we know that, initially temp here is zero, so zero times two is zero. So it'll be it'll be child of zero or one. So we're even, we're now looking at either the first or second entry in the child array. So the entry that corresponds to the root nodes children. This part, initially, we in the first iteration through this loop, we don't do anything because the, the child array is always, it's all negative ones because we haven't built up a partial tree yet. So we're not going to go through this part. And the first, um, in the first time we go through this while loop, we, we don't go through that. This part is sort of the interesting part. So what's happening in this part of the code? This, these, these, actually, these first three lines here, Basically, so as as the threads are kind of going through the partially constructed tree, if we get to a situation where two different threads um, get to the same leaf node, only one of them can add at a time. You can't have both simultaneously adding. So in a case like that, only one will add at a time, and this is how we do this. These three lines of code here, basically lock it so that only one of those threads is going to get through to actually add to that leaf node. And that's what we add to the leaf node here. And then all the threads that, that couldn't get into this, this part of the code, they skip this if loop and they just sit here at the sync threads and wait. Um, the threads that did make it in, they do their adding to the tree, to the child array, which is representing our tree. And then they get out and they all meet up again and then we go through the loop again. And then this time um, as the tree gets built, the threads will be running this part of the code in parallel. This is the parallel traversal of the tree, whereas this here is the add, the actual adding of uh, nodes to the tree. And 
This part can, be, it, it is done in parallel. For example, if I can demonstrate with my hands here. So you have all, all these threads running through this binary tree. You know, say you have a, a thread, you know, 15 goes over here, you know, over here, let's say. And it, it, adds its, it can add its node there while thread four goes this way and it can add its node there. But in situations where you get two threads, say like thread two and three, and they get down to the same leaf node, they want to both add there, only one can do that at a time. So what, say thread, in this case, say thread two adds it, thread three will skip and it'll have to go back to the beginning, retraverse the tree, and now when it gets back to that same spot, well, there's a new node there because thread two already added it, so maybe it'll traverse one more down into thread two and then it can add. Um, yeah, so it, it's a little bit confusing here, just, just, yeah, maybe pen and paper it out and really kind of think about what's going on here. It's Thankfully, it's not too many lines of code. Um, so I think it makes sense. So I just want to just take your time with it and just kind of map it out in your head. But uh, let's do a test run here and show you what, what the output looks like. So we do our make. Okay, so let's run it. Yeah, okay. So this says that our initial array, right here, this is our initial array and it is, as you can see, it's the numbers one to 16 in shuffled order. So in any order, each thread gets assigned a different number. So thread zero gets eight, thread one gets three, thread two gets 12, all the way up to thread 15 gets two. Each thread is, and then this in this array here is our child array. This is representing our tree, uh, our tree data structure. So each negative one corresponds to like a null child. There's no node there. So for example, six and nine are the left and right uh, nodes of the root node. So six is on the left, nine is on the right. Uh, for example, two times six is 12. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. So that means 3 and 8, 3 and 8 here are the left and right nodes of the, sorry, the 3 and 8 are the left and right children of node 6. Okay, so yeah. Um, hopefully this made sense to everyone. Uh, just take your time and run through it. I think it's a really cool example. So major props out to the uh, this Benjamin Newcomb guy who, I, I'm not sure if he, he came up with this idea or if other people have done it, but that's where I learned it from. Uh, yeah, it's really interesting, and it just shows you that even though trees are maybe kind of thought of these data structures that are really, you can't do on CUDA, but you actually can. And so, uh, yeah, it's used in a lot of a different, uh, more complicated algorithms, so... Uh, really cool example. Um, hope everyone enjoyed. Uh, I think next time I might go back and actually do that prime sieving technique that I was talking about earlier. I didn't do it this time. So maybe that's what my next video will be. But um, until then, yeah, I hope hopefully everyone's uh, enjoying them and learning something. Okay, bye.